There's a big difference between planning a meeting and designing a meeting, and we've got someone here today who's going to help us understand what that difference is. Please welcome John Nahn of The Perfect Meeting. John, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank Thanks you for, for having me. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Uh, you make a, a, an important distinction, and I'm not sure every planner understands that distinction yet. In fact, until your job is done, more don't than do. But there is a difference in the distinction between a meeting design and a meeting plan. Is that the case? There is. Uh, meeting planners, for the most part, are responsible for the logistics of their meetings. And I always recommend my clients to never do a meeting of significance without a meeting professional on staff because uh, they can do things that really nobody else is trained or experienced in doing. Uh, and they have an integral role to play in uh, launching a successful meeting. But designers uh, take a different uh, perspective on meeting. They focus more on the form and the content of the meeting uh, as opposed to the logistics. Um, designers have a different methodology. Uh, they oftentimes start by asking key questions of their stakeholders to try to determine what their needs are. And once they discover those needs, they translate those into business goals and meeting objectives for the respective meeting. And that step there of having that conversation with the stakeholder and translating those into those goals and objectives are one of the things that really differentiates planners, traditional planners, uh, from uh, meeting designers. And once you've developed those goals and objectives, uh, meeting designers uh, use a number of different uh, taxonomies uh, in combination with different uh, meeting elements to develop or create some design interventions. And then they implement those interventions and they generally assess or evaluate how successful they are uh, after the meeting. Um, are, those, are those functions always resident in separate individuals or is it a mindset? Could a person be a designer or planner or, or you're suggesting they should be two very different people? Good question. I do believe they represent different skill sets. I also believe they can reside in the same individual. Uh, these skills that we're talking about in terms of uh, asking questions of your stakeholders, uh, translating those into uh, goals and objectives, those are not difficult skills to, to learn or to teach. And actually MPI has funded some research on the business value of meetings where those tools and those resources have been developed for the membership uh, so that they can use them and start to incorporate them into what they're doing now. Uh, yeah, because I would imagine in a corporate setting, to go in and say we need to add staff in meetings and events, we need to hire somebody whose skills are not resident here, it could be tough unless you know, you'd be better off learning those skills rather than going and hiring, unless you can, unless, yes. there's, unless, there's, yes. unless there's budget. Well, it's partly a skill set as well, but it's also a mindset difference as well because the designers really focus using design principles on things like doing less with more, which is really the new normal in the industry these days. So if you focus your design on really what matters most to your attendees, you might find that you say actually save money and save time in planning and executing your meeting. And everybody could use more of both of those. Yeah, I, you're absolutely right. And I, I think that, that you cannot fix an execution what you didn't address, in, or if you do, it's expensive, yep, what you didn't address in strategy. And I would imagine that the design part happens well before the date of the meeting, that, that the designers at the lead part of the discussion. Absolutely. Um, these conversations, these crucial conversations, really need to take place as soon in the process as possible. And traditional meeting professionals, the meeting planners, they do try to get ahead of the curve as much as possible. Uh, but these conversations need to take place in order for the meeting professional to do their job effectively. When you, uh, and you, you meet with all kinds of associations and corporations around the world, when you meet with them, what's the number one question you tend to, to get back from your audiences, whether it's from corporate executives or the planners themselves, is there an area there that you tend to have to deal with FAQs from a design standpoint or planning standpoint? Where a lot of people start this process is they're really interested in doing things differently. Uh, they've been doing things very much the same way for a long time and it's either not working for them or it is working for them and they don't know why. Um, and so they are looking to introduce something more experiential into their meetings that it's going to provide more value to the attendee, enhance that attendee experience. And this is where really design helps the most. And it's one of the few opportunities, I believe, in the meeting industry where we have an opportunity as meeting professionals to not only help save costs by coming up with some unique design solutions that don't cost more money, but also add value at the same time to that attendee experience. And I can't think of anything else in the industry that, that provides that type of promise than meeting design. And I think there was a study done by Forbes or Fortune among chief marketing officers who said their highest ROI was, they felt, from business meetings and events yep. and incentives, I think, was the third thing. Uh, so clearly, what you're kind of talking about is, is to elevate meetings and planning, you know, meetings and events, 
to a position of more of a, of a communications channel. I mean, think of it in terms of strategy and, Absolutely. and messaging. Absolutely. Yep. As a matter of fact, I would wager that if we started really measuring the business value of meetings uh, as we know how to do, uh, we'd actually see that they underestimate how important uh, right. these meetings and these conferences actually are to their respective organizations. Because it's curious, John, when you think about it, if you talk to an advertising person, i say, oh yeah, I understand a commercial, we're going to run an ad, uh, we're going to run a, a print ad, um, I get that. Uh, or we're going to do something digital. You talk about meetings, it's, yeah. yeah, get the guys together, we're going to have a little, I mean, the whole perception of meetings needs to catch up with, with the reality of it, it seems. Absolutely, well, meetings are changing. Um, I think that they are becoming more participant-centric. It's really more, less about the front of the room and more about the rest of the room. They're also becoming more experiential and more interactive. It's less about a monologue and more about a dialogue. And they are becoming more results driven, slowly but surely. It's less about attendee satisfaction, which is a very common metric, and more about something meaningful and more measurable that's related to either individual or organizational performance. Terrific, John. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.